cannot be more grateful because I am completely healed. I could have died. I could have lost my life. My breathing was affected. Every muscle. My body was failing me. Failing completely. So it is Jamila here and um, I'm a little bit not unprepared but I, I just wanted to come and to talk to you guys about something really serious that I've been contemplating sharing. Um, it's pretty much my testimony and I don't really know, you know what to say or how to say it or how people are going to take it. I just know that it's time for me to share it. I've held it for a while. Well, I've talked about this on my channel before. I have other videos about uh, my autoimmune disease that I went through. I have, you know, other stories about it and stuff. And then I have, you know, how it happened and, you know, videos of my journey and stuff, but I haven't talked about the spiritual side of it or the what people may call the supernatural aspect of it. And that whole journey for me was all it was it was just a spiritual progression. And I want to tell what God did for me, you know, because God did heal me of Guillain-Barre syndrome, and I never have talked about that aspect of it and I'm ready to share my story because people need to know about God and who he is and what he did for me and how awesome that he is and um, I hope no one gets offended but if you feel like you're going to get offended then I still encourage you to watch it you know this video because everyone needs to know whether you want to receive it or not everyone needs to know what God did for me and what he can do for others and just how awesome he is. So back in 2013, I had started my sophomore year in August of my sophomore year of college. And, um, you know, I've always been a part of a, a Christian fellowship and while in that Christian fellowship, and I was very, I've always been very, very close to God. I grew up in church. I've always wanted to have a relationship with Christ. And um, throughout that semester, uh, for quite a few months actually of that semester, I would, I had a feeling that I just knew something was going to happen to me. I just didn't know what it was that was going to happen, but I felt as if I needed to prepare myself for whatever it was that I was going to go through. And I would pray constantly. I'd be like, okay, God, I don't know what it is, but I feel like something's going to happen and I'm going to trust you and I'm going to still love you and I want to, you know, prepare myself. So. I started to read, for some reason, I just felt as if I needed to read the book of Job. And I started to read the book of Job and about uh, Job being a upright and a righteous man and how he went through a lot of different trials. But at the end of the day, regardless of what he went through, he still loved God. He still praised God and worshiped God and he didn't curse God or turn away from God and I had told God I was like whatever it is that I'm gonna go through I want to be just like Job I want to be just like Job and I want to still love you and praise you and you know have faith as I go through this because I know that you'll keep me just like you kept Job so the rest of that semester went by and that of 2013 and 2014 rolled around January 2014 and school had started back up in January and in February is when I started to experience the symptoms of Guillain-Barre syndrome and um, I have the video of the whole story and the symptoms and things so I won't really go into the symptoms and everything but 
I did start to experience the symptoms, but I didn't quite understand it. And I thought, you know, it was an allergic reaction. I thought that it could have been, you know, because I was taking prednisone for an allergic reaction that I was having to some pineapple. And I thought that the medicine was causing me to feel the way that I was feeling. And, you know, the shortness of breath and everything. And I um, was on a Christian retreat at the time. And... Like I said, I thought that everything was because of the prednisone. So while I was on this Christian retreat, we were um, reading. We were reading our Bible. We were praising God and we were singing and just just enjoying God. And we were reading Peter. And in First Peter, it talks about, you know, suffering for Christ. And when you go through trials and tribulations, you know, because Christ went through it as well, we can get through it too. And as Christians, we're going to suffer for Christ. And that was the beginning of my symptoms, but it didn't click for me. And once we got back from the tree is when I started to fall, like paralyzed and get very weak. And I, as I was going through it, I continued to just pray and I continued to just talk to God. And I'm just like, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. You know, and I had blacked out and I was in the hospital and after going to five doctors, five different hospitals, no one could figure out why I was blacking out, why I was paralyzed, why I couldn't move my face, why I couldn't move anything, why I was having a hard time breathing. And they would tell me things like it was the flu or a cold and stuff like that. And I finally was told that it was Guillain-Barre syndrome by the fifth doctor that I had visited. And as I was laying there, they had to give me a spinal tap and they had to give me, you know, muscle shocks and um, just different tests to test my muscles and things like that. And as I was laying on that hospital bed and I couldn't move and, you know, they were diagnosing me. They were saying all these different things as I'm laying there, you know, and seeing my mom and my grandmother and they were just sitting there like... They were, um, well, my mom was more worried, you know, and I had just looked at her and I was like, you know, my, it's okay because I trust God and God loves me and I love him, but he loves me more and I trust him with my life and whatever happens, it is God's will, but I'm going to be fine. And, you know, me preparing, God making me feel I needed to prepare myself is what really got me to that place where I had so much faith in God that, like, no matter what had happened to me or what was going to happen to me, I trusted him, you know, nonetheless. And throughout the whole process, I would constantly have songs in my spirit. And there would be songs that God would give me and I could hear it in my spirit. And they just encouraged me so much, no matter how many appointments I had to go to and no matter what I felt, whether I was having double vision or whether I was in pain because there's so much pain behind Guillain-Barre syndrome. But regardless of everything, God gave me a song in my spirit for every moment that I went through. And the one thing that God reminded me of was to have patience because I was starting to rush the process. And God had to remind me, Jamila, be patient. Because I need people to see that I still heal. That I am who I say that I am. I am God. I provide. And it was really important. And once God had let me know that, like, my mindset had kind of, like, shifted. Because, I, you know, when you're incapable of doing a lot, of, when you're not capable of doing a lot of things, it makes you want to rush the process. And I had treatment and everything in the hospital. And, you know, and I was starting to rush the treatment Oh, excuse me, I was starting to rush the process and I was wanting to get back to my normal self and after a while my face started to move again and I was able to move my arms and everything better and I would get my grandma to take me to the bathroom and every single day I would look in the mirror and I would just smile and I would be like, oh grandma, look, I can smile more today and I could see my teeth more and I started to smile more and I went to bed one night and I woke up the next day and all of my progress was gone. I couldn't smile anymore. I couldn't move my face anymore. I was back weak, right back at my starting point after all that progress that I had got. And I was so excited about it. And when I had woke up that day and I was sad and I wanted to cry and I was like, Grandma, I can't move my face anymore. I can't do this or that anymore. And the Lord said to me, he, he said, Jamila, 
It's not the medicine that's going to do it. It's not the doctors that's going to do it. It's me. You have to trust me. And from that day forward, I literally put everything that I had into God. I didn't want to look at any more mirrors. I didn't want to try to like compare what I was the day before to the next day. I literally put all of my faith and I put all of my trust in God completely. And he let me know that people needed to see this. That what I was going through was so people could see. Like, this is a display so people can see what I'm capable of. That I'm still God and I was a willing vessel for him to do that. And God was able to do that through me. But he had to remind me, your faith needs to stay strong in me. You know, and I, 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 it got to a point where I was just like, you know, God, whether I live or die. I trusted that God that much. So I said, whether I live or die, God, it is your will and not my own. I'm going to trust you regardless of what happens to me. And there was an, and God was showing me so many dreams. And I would see so many things and have so many songs. And I was so encouraged through the process. And I never forgot who I was. I never was saddened by the fact of what I was going through because I knew who God was. And there was also another point in my sickness where I was laying, I would go stay with my mom on the weekends, but during the week I would stay with my grandma because she could see me 24-7. You know, my mom had to work. And it was one weekend and I was laying at my mom's house and it was the middle of the night. And, you know, the pillows were so uncomfortable. Like, your body ached so bad. The pillows were so uncomfortable that nothing was helping me and I couldn't turn myself over I couldn't move I was just stuck in one spot in so much pain but I had to use the bathroom and I couldn't do anything so I was calling my sister and I was calling my mom and I was calling their names and neither one of them heard me and my sister was actually in the bed right over we it was she was in the same room in the bed right beside my bed and I was calling her name and she couldn't hear me and I thought I was calling my mom's name because she used to sleep in the living room so she could be able to hear me, but nobody could hear me. And I just closed my eyes and I started talking to God and I was like, God, please, please take this pain away. Excuse me, I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry, but I, I had said to God, I was like, God, please take this pain away. I need your help. I need your help. I can't do this, you know, and it was like I was in so much pain and there was nobody who could hear me and I couldn't get up. I couldn't do anything. I was helpless. And I just said those things to God and I just closed my eyes and I turned my head to the side. And I had one one arm, this arm was still behind me and from like I could like with my eyes closed, all I could see was white. And I saw a hand holding my hand. And from behind me, the hand that was like over here, I felt my hand come up off the bed. I felt someone holding my hand. And I felt just a hug. And my whole entire body from the top of my head all the way to the bottom of my feet, all the pain that I had felt had went completely away. And I had felt so safe. And I felt so secure. And I felt like I was going to be okay. And then my hand went back down on the bed. And I went to sleep just like that. And it, I was there was no more pain. There was nothing else that I had felt. And I woke up the next day and my grandmother was coming to pick me up. And she was taking me, you know, back. Um, either it was to an appointment or it was back to her house. But she was picking me up because it was time for me to go back with her. And my mom was at work. I don't remember where my sister was. And I, I told my grandma, I was like, I think my mama came and hugged me last night. I think she was hugging me. And um, I was like, because I was calling her and I think she was hugging me. And I had, um, I had called my mama at work and I was like, Ma, you know, call me back or whatever. And she called me back. And um, I said, Ma. Were you hugging me last night? I was like, did you come in and did you wrap your arms around me? And did you hug me until I fell asleep? And she was like, no, boo, I wasn't there. She was like, I was asleep last night. I wasn't in the room with you. I was like, are you sure? 
are you sure you didn't come in and hug me? And she said, she was like, no. She said, no, I didn't. And it just like, and I had went to this church service and I had told grandma, I was like, wow, you know, I was so shocked because I could feel the hug, you know, me being hugged. And I, I could have sworn that it was my mom. I could have sworn it was her. And I went to this church service and we were going to our revival and there was a woman there and they had walked me to the front and the lady looked me in my eyes. I had never seen her before. And she looked me in my eyes and she said, um, she just hugged, she just hugged me so tight. And she said to me, she said, God said to just hug you. He said that you're his baby girl. And he loves you. And she just continued to hug me. And I just cried in her own. Okay, so sorry about that. My camera cut off. And it also gave me a chance to get pull myself together. But as I was saying, after she had hugged me and talked to me, at the end of church, my aunt, my great aunt, had went and talked to her and let her know what I had experienced. Uh, prior to that and she said that's because the Lord said that he's wrapped around me and that meant a lot to me because what I felt was like so real and for God to have been there for me in the way that he was it really just I, I mean I trusted God so much I had so much faith in God like every step of my sickness he was right there and it just required me to trust him, to give myself to him, to have as my complete faith and trust in him. Not the medicine, not the doctors, none of that. And I've always struggled with telling this story because I never knew how people would perceive it. Or I never knew, you know, if people would be offended by me being a Christian. But I... This is the first time I've ever, ever, besides, you know, my mom, my grandma, knowing what I experienced. This is my first time telling people about my experience with God in my autoimmune disease, in my sickness. And although it took quite a few months for me to completely be healed back, restored, because I can't say healed, but it's restored. Because when I say God restored every point in every organ and every piece of my body back to normal every the only thing that came late was my reflex I just didn't have my reflexes as quickly as everything else but it took me less than a year to be walking again I was feeding myself dressing myself I was able to do so much and I have every bit of my being every bit of every bodily function completely back to normal and people who experience Guillain-Barre syndrome either have some type of residue of the autoimmune disease or reoccurrence of it or some kind of permanent paralysis but they caught it just in time and yes it did take me quite a few months but at the end of the day God restored me completely and I had told God every morning Every morning that I woke up, I said, thank you, Lord. And every night before I went to bed, I said, thank you, Lord. Because in spite of what I was feeling at the time, I still gave God the glory because I knew what my end result was going to be. I knew that he would restore me completely because I trusted him to do so. And that's faith. It wasn't just me saying it. I really believed and acted on what I believed that God was going to do just for me. And it is just, it's awesome. It's for me to even think about where I am because the, it took me out of school. I couldn't go to school anymore. I'm graduating this year. I'm graduating in December. I'm here on my own back at the same school that my autoimmune disease took me out of. There's so much damage that comes with Guillain-Barre syndrome because your immune system is attacking full force and it, it eats away your myelin sheath and everything and I'm completely back to normal and I cannot thank anybody but God for that and I'm telling you trust God keep your faith get to know him
because I promise you, I even had a virus during my autoimmune disease and I had a cold. And if anyone has ever had Guillain-Barre syndrome or any doctors, they worry. Because if you have a virus or anything, it'll take you straight back to square one. I didn't lose not one bit of my progress from being having a virus or getting sick, throwing up, none of that. The doctors were worried, but God kept me at a good place right where I was before I had even gotten sick. With, with the virus and the cold before I'd even gotten the viruses and before I was throwing up and everything. He kept me right at my same stage of progress. The only time that I lost progress was when I started to trust. And my vision started to go from faith in God to, oh my God, the medicine is working. The doctors did a good job. When, it le when my focus left from God and went to the material, the temporary things in life, that is when I started to fall back. But God reminded me where my focus should always have laid. And once my focus got back in that faith and into God, and I had promised God, I said, God, when you bring me out of this, because I know that you will, I'm going to praise you like I've never, ever praised you before. And the, when I got back to walking and when I was able and capable on my own, I danced in that church all that I wanted to because that was my way of praising God and saying, because you did this for me, I owe you this praise. And it's just, it's just awesome. And like I said, I've never told this story before, so I hope that somebody got something out of this or that it even all just made sense. And even if it doesn't make sense, I pray that God allows it to make sense to whoever even watches this. But I want the world to see this. So if you're watching this, share it. I need people to share it and share it and share it because people need to know that God does heal. God saves. God provides. God is our Father. He is exactly who He says it is. He is, and His Word cannot return back unto Him void. And His Word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. I'm telling you, all you need to do is just have a little taste of God, a little experience with God, and it, it just, you want more. And I've always wanted more of God, and I cannot be more grateful because I am completely healed. I could have died. I could have lost my life. My breathing was affected. Every muscle, my body was failing me, failing completely. But because of my faith in God and because God is who he says he is, and I trusted him to be just that in my life, he healed me. He restored me completely. And I just, like I said, I, did, I didn't really have an agenda for this. I didn't have everything set in stone of what I was going to say. But, and I wasn't trying to get emotional. But it's like when you start to tell people about what God has done for you. And when you think about what God has done for you, it's like, it makes you emotional. It makes you kind of like shake a little bit. It makes you like, I don't know, you feel different. And to know that we serve a God who takes care of his own, I'm telling you, it's awesome. God is so awesome, and I just encourage you guys to get to know him. Read your word, because I'm telling you, if you read that word, it sticks with you. It sticks in you. And you stand on that, God will be everything that his word says that he is. You just got to trust him. And... I, 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 it built my faith. It, it really, going through that built my faith. I've never heard of it before I had it, and I've never heard of it afterwards. And I haven't experienced not one thing since God healed me. Because when God does something, it is complete. And in Jesus' name, it is complete. I will not experience Guillain-Barre syndrome ever again because I trust that God completely restored me. And I don't have to worry about it anymore. But that's the beautiful part of trusting God. And I just encourage you guys, like I said, trust God, read your word, get into it. And I hope that this helps somebody and I, I just have to share what God has done for me. And I, I, I love everyone. I love you all because, you know, God requires that. And God's love is so genuine and it's so real. And if you feel it, you won't want to turn away from it. You won't want to turn away from it. And it, it's beautiful. Call out to him. Cry out to him. Let him know what is on your heart. You know, and just uh, pursue God. That's all I can say. Pursue 
God, I'm telling you, he's awesome. And I just hope that this helps someone. And I hope you all have a blessed day or wherever you're at. Where if you're watching this, I pray that you have a blessed day. I pray that this touched you in some kind of way. I love you all. And I thank you for watching, for clicking on it. If you got to this point, thank you so much. And uh, share it. Tell, tell God about it. I mean, tell others about this story, but tell others about what God has done for you. He doesn't want you to keep that to yourself. It's for other people. Tell people so we can spread the word of God because he's too good to keep to ourselves. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.